șefa Subcomisiei pentru Securitate și apărarea Parlamentului European. Madame Lazo, Proiectul. Well, good afternoon, all of you, and thank you for being here. Um, I wanted to meet with you at the end uh, of uh, our visit to Moldova. We are a delegation of six members of the European Parliament focusing on foreign policy, security, and defense uh, from different nationalities and different political groups. The purpose of our, of our visit is to send a strong message of support to Moldova. Uh, at the moment where uh, the situation in the region is of course tense, uh, and at the moment where Moldova has been granted a candidate status uh, for accession to uh, the European Union, we consider it as a privilege that Moldova wants to join the European Union. And so uh, we met uh, with uh, national authorities, we met with the Prime Minister, the Minister for Internal Affairs, the Foreign Minister, the Defence Minister, uh, and uh, the Speaker of the Parliament and members of the Parliament. And we went to uh, a, a checkpoint uh, between Transnistria and the rest of Moldova, because we met with uh, officials from UBAM, and from the new uh, EU partnership mission uh, who just arrived to support Moldova. We also discussed um, the prospect of the uh, European Political Community Summit meeting on June 1st here in Kisinau. It is a very important moment. It is a very strong signal that all of Europe cares about Moldova, is supportive of Moldova, and I think it's a reason for pride for all, for all the Moldovans. Uh, we know that um, Moldova has chosen a democratic and European path, uh, and we feel that we are uh, in the same family, that we face uh, the same challenges, and so that our solidarity has to be extremely strong, especially because Moldova has been living through the consequences of the Russian war of aggression in Ukraine, welcoming many refugees, uh, facing uh, rising energy prices, uh, facing inflation, and uh, the efforts made by the European Union to support Moldova are substantive and uh, will continue in the future. This was what I wanted to say as introductory remarks. Acum puteți adresa întrebări. Vă rog să vă prezentați și să ne spuneți și ce instituție prezentați. Da, vă rog să adresați întrebările, o să le traduc în limba engleză, nu vă, nu vă sfiți. for this period when the leaders of the states and governments are coming, but also uh, for the next period as well. Public broadcast. Well, the uh, European political community um, is a, a very appropriate way 
to gather the European family, uh, whether you are a member of the European Union, a candidate for accession, a former member like the UK, or even not intending to become a member, because we face the same challenges together. In terms of security guarantees, uh, a number of efforts are being done by the European Union right now. Uh, first, we engage in providing uh, military equipment to Moldova through the European Peace Facility. It started last year and it's ongoing, uh, answering the requests of uh, Moldova. Second, uh, the uh, civilian mission, the European Union Partnership Mission, is designed to support Moldova in its effort to fight hybrid threats, because this is obviously uh, another kind of war, which is uh, fought uh, essentially from Russia towards a number of European countries, and Moldova is obviously in the front line of this hybrid warfare. So uh, EUPM is designed to uh, support Moldova, enhance cyber security, fight against information manipulation, and you are all professional journalists, so I guess you care about fighting uh, manipulation of information, and all sorts of interferences which obviously have taken place and are taking place in Moldova right now. Let me only mention uh, fake bomb alerts, which have uh, happened so often in Moldova in, or in order to put pressure on public opinion. These things are not acceptable. Moldova is a sovereign country uh, choosing its own path and should not suffer from these interferences. De obicei, toate proiectele care se votează în Parlamentul European trec, sunt aprobate cu majoritate largă. Există un consens pe Republica Moldova în grupurile politice din țările membre? The decisions that are taken by the European Parliament are usually adopted with a vast majority. Is there a consensus? regarding Moldova uh, among the political uh, factions? That's good because as I'm a French speaker, I can understand Moldova <laughs> more or less. Um, yeah, but uh, yes, you're right. Uh, as regards Moldova, uh, every single report or vote uh, is already, is always getting a very large majority. Last week, we voted in favor of additional financial assistance to Moldova. Uh, and it was widely adopted by most of the political groups. I have to say that we have some MEPs, some members of the European Parliament, who are obviously pro-Russian. They are well identified, uh, but they are a very tiny minority. And we also work on fighting uh, foreign malicious interferences in our own parliament. So this, on this as well, we are in the same boat with Moldova. What is your opinion? How uh, long will the support for Ukraine go on? Well, it's one of the many miscalculations of President Putin. He thought that um, the European Union would be divided and we are united. He thought that public opinion would be tired of supporting Ukraine because of the number of refugees, because energy prices, because inflation, and he was wrong. Uh, approximately average throughout the European Union uh, support for uh, standing with Ukraine is around 70% in public opinion, which is really strong, despite Russian efforts to spread disinformation or, or to have what I could call 
useful idiots in the uh, political spectrum in the European Union. It's one more failure or miscalculation of Russia because people see the atrocities committed by Russian military in Ukraine. If they had illusions before or lack of interest, they have lost their illusions. They understand that uh, Ukrainian victory is necessary not only for Ukraine, not only for the region, but for the whole European continent. Not all, not all, not all. <laughs> so uh, what are the new measures that the EU adopts in uh, supporting Moldova to, fa to uh, counter these uh, threats? Well, as I said, um, on the military side, um, the European Peace Facility provides equipment to the uh, Moldovan military. And our conversation with uh, the Minister of Defence uh, showed that there was very positive uh, reaction from Moldova and on hybrid threats it's more um, the uh, role of the uh, EU partnership mission which is a brand new mission, a brand new mandate really tailor-made for the kind of hybrid threats that Moldova is facing and then you have bilateral partnerships between a number of member states and Moldova. Romania is of course very present and very active. It's not the only one. Uh, and uh, I come from France and I know how strong the relation is and the trust is between uh, President Sandu and President Macron. They meet quite often, they talk quite often, and uh, the French president pays a lot of attention to what's taking place in Moldova. I do think it's exactly the same uh, when it comes to Germany uh, and a number of other uh, member states. So everybody is committed to protect Moldova and we also know that no provocation is coming from Moldova. No, uh, it would be extremely difficult if not impossible uh, for Russia to pretend that Moldova is having any sort of provocative behavior because Moldova is a peaceful country, it's even a neutral country, so, um, and it has managed um, since, for, since the beginning of the, the, the Russian War of Aggression for 14 months to uh, keep peace, calm, and even uh, uh, considering the situation of Transnistria, it didn't turn into something more bitter, for instance. Thank you. She uh, Experts say that the EPC summit would uh, consolidate the uh, cooperation between uh, uh, the countries in Europe and Moldova. Are there specific uh, fields in which these uh, cooperation could consolidate more, uh, be it uh, social, uh, economic, security, whatever? Well, there are many things already 
ongoing in terms of support for uh, Moldova, for infrastructure, for uh, uh, education, and the European Union is already committed towards Moldova. Uh, but as a member of the European Parliament, I think that there are some uh, progress that could be easily made uh, and I think I speak in the name of the whole delegation if I say that roaming, for instance, uh, would be an important positive step. Uh, and uh, the discussions will go on on what more can be done to attract investment to Moldova. Uh, but it also takes uh, all the efforts made by the uh, Moldovan government to uh, answer the nine recommendations from the Commission because it goes in the right direction. Reform of the judiciary, we know it's not easy because it's uneasy everywhere, but it's necessary. Fighting against corruption, we know as well it's not easy, but there is strong commitment. Uh, the oligarchization is also necessary. Not to please the EU, but for the benefit of ordinary Moldovans, I think. Yes, yes. Because all the things that we are talking about, the European Union, the cooperation, the European Union, the negotiations of the European Union, we have this conflict with Transnistria. So, I'm still on the topic of 1st of June, but also on Moldova joining the EU negotiations. We still have the Transnistrian conflict. Right. And in our uh, in your opening remarks, uh, you've been <coughs> saying about uh, some meetings with uh, Moldovan officials on Transnistrian topic. So how can Moldova join the EU? Because it's clear that it it could not uh, do it uh, without a uh, solution for the Transnistrian conflict. Well, I think that Moldovan authorities are the first to be committed to uh, the reintegration of uh, Transnistria uh, within, under the authority of Moldovan authorities. Um, and I think that for Transnistrian, uh, there is a very concrete reality already, and that is that experts uh, originating from Transnistria are, go massively to the European Union the future of the whole country of Moldova, including Transnistria, is with the European Union. Uh, it means peace, it means prosperity, it means social progress. So uh, I do hope that the population in Transnistria gets it, and not only by uh, leaving uh, the region, as many of them did already, but also as realizing that uh, a European future for Moldova is also beneficial to them. But we also pay attention and uh, we would not be fooled by any sort of provocation going against uh, Moldovan authorities, either from Transnistria or from abroad. We would know that they are provocations. Uh, we would know that they are interferences. And uh, if some are tempted to try to disrupt uh, the process in Moldova, uh, my advice would be don't even try. Thank you. Madame was openly speak about Transnistria. Uh, we have this uh, common agenda uh, at the EU level, uh, a special status for uh, Transnistria, but at the same time, what should we do with the, the so called elites of this uh, grey region in terms of integrating this uh, the population in this 
Well, this is really not up to foreigners to give recipes to Moldovans. Uh, it has to come from Moldova itself. Uh, I think that there is no doubt that uh, if you consider your neighbor Romania, uh, where it was before joining the European Union, how it is today, there is such a, a difference that every single Moldovan, wherever he or she comes from, whether an ordinary Moldovan or elite, can realize that the benefit of being a member of the European Union. And for us, we would benefit having Moldova in the European Union. I'm really firmly, strongly convinced about it. Because you have an experience, because you have a history, uh, and uh, Europe, a stronger, a, a bigger Europe is a stronger Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.